But vegans wonder why we don't like them so much. My God, listen to yourself, mate. They're just very bizarre people. What the hell is that? You can't make this up. Oh my God, has anyone got like a really small violin? England has the highest standards in the world. Just trying to process that. Yeah, that's not disgusting at all. So, yesterday was the seventh annual NFU propaganda campaign. Hashtag back British farming day. Very interesting they decided to have the day on the 2nd of November, a day after World Vegan Day. What they're really telling us to do is back British animal farming. Animal harming. They're talking about dairy and beef and pork and chicken. Eggs. But what about the potato farmers and the fruit and vegetable farmers? What about them? Why don't we back them? Right? Back back farmers. Back the plant farmers. Right? And the animal harmers, get rid of them. Maybe they should take a little waltz on down where they send their animals and see how much they'd like it. So the NFU proclaim themselves as the voice of British farming. But all they really do is make up a bunch of fairy tales about the farming sector so that you buy the products the farmers are selling. Back British Farming Day is basically just a big propaganda campaign telling you all the good things about British farming and completely forgetting about the massive factory farms that exist all across British countryside in big dark dingy sheds. Funny that the back British farming campaign never really gives us a glimpse into chicken farming, you know, when the birds are ready to be quote unquote harvested, having their heads cut off, and they're all falling over on their overgrown bodies and dying on their faces in these horrible sheds. They usually focus on you know, the small holding dairy farmer and the small holding pig farmer that's got two pigs. And anyway, what the NFU are doing is encouraging farmers to take little photos with, with a little sign saying back British farming and encouraging small holders to show how much they care for the land and, you know, how much they care for the animals. And it's all a big load of crap because remember, these farmers are salespeople at the end of the day. So they're trying to tell you good things about their products because the public are consumers. And us as animal activists are trying to tell you, hey, something's going wrong here. Animals are being decapitated. They're being forced into these horrible factory farms and animals do not want to die. And if you really cared about animals like you claim you do, you wouldn't decapitate them for a couple of pound in the pocket, if you know what I mean. So seeing as the NFU and farming propagandists want to have their little tradition, how about we start our own tradition and go through the hashtag back British farming on the world's most popular and ridiculous app, TikTok and see what the farmers are doing, starting with Will. What do you think of British farming? Let's have a look. Will, what do you think of British farming? British farming, we're proud of our produce. Look at these cows. Great British beef, grass fed, nutritious, and most of all, they're happy. Really good welfare, top in the world. So we're proud of that. Wow, Will, Will dropping those bombs did you get a script from the nfu do you all have the same script because you repeat and regurgitate the same nonsense got his little uh a little placard there look how happy they are hey will those cows look so happy you know what the most complimentary thing to their happiness would be a nice sharp knife in their neck and cut their head off i'm sure that's what happy cows really want and you talk about, oh, they, you know, they're grass fed, they're, they're eating the grass there. Where's the big massive hay bales that have been harvested? You forget about those, hey? Nutritious and they're happy. The animals that I decapitate and go on to eat their bodies are the happiest animals on earth. And it can't be, it can't really be a British farming campaign without indoctrinating a few small children. Look at the little... Little young farmer there. Teaching him young. Look. What the hell is that? What the hell is this? What are you teaching this small child to do? This cow here is leaking milk out of their overgrown, swollen udders. And you're teaching your kid to drink out of an animal like this. I hope you don't do any of those disgusting, sick, sexually explicit things to the cow in front of this small child, because that would be child abuse. But this here, I mean, this is borderline bizarre enough. Um, yeah, I hope you hide many of the aspects of dairy farming from this small child, because uh, that would be very morally questionable, just exposing a child to the 
artificial insemination of these cows and the child kidnap. I mean, uh, wait a second, the uh, the uh, removing the calf for their own safety uh, from the mothers. And uh, I hope this child doesn't get to see what happens to these cows when their milk production declines. But, you know, hashtag back British farming for sure. Here we go. What we got here? Farming. Hard work. Hard work. And we love it. All a bit of a challenge every day. Hard work, you know, because farmers are the only ones who work hard in the entire world. Just remember that farmers, are, they're the hardest workers ever. You know, it's a hard work fisting cows up the arse and, you know, sticking knives into animals. It's incredibly hard to torture chickens and torture pigs in farrowing crates. Incredibly hard on the farmers. These cows, they're getting their daily strawing. Mate, look at this welfare. Giving the cows a bit of daily straw before you stick your arm right up their rectum. Keep them nice and clean. Clean straw, mate, and anything. <laughs> Once you give them clean straw, everything else after that is completely morally justified. Just remember that one. Best welfare in the world. Best welfare in the world, eh? Uh, even better than human welfare? I mean, <laughs> imagine if you worked in human welfare and you're like, you know what, actually, you know, we, even though we don't decapitate these human beings, British farmers, they're, they're the best welfare in the world. Are you talking about best animal welfare? Because I, I don't even think what you do is anywhere near welfare, especially when you put it in the human context. Uh, I mean, imagine the best dog welfare in the world, <laughs> but we send them all to get their head cut off at the end of the day, turn them into burgers. If Britain has the best welfare in the world, it wouldn't be very hard because it's like crap or crapper because it's like horrifying or even more horrifying. And I'd just say Britain's just horrifying. I mean, Britain is almost as bad as anywhere else, really. When you look at the investigations, when you look at actual factory farming and when you stick cameras inside of slaughterhouses, which the farmers don't like talking about that too much, do they? They just like talking about the clean straw and, you know, look at our beautiful, happy cows, the four cows we've got here. And they don't like talking about the majority of farming and they like to just skillfully delete from their memory the horrible bloody slaughterhouse, don't they? Talking about welfare and talking about farmers just loving animals, here's a farmer here just loving pigs, Jeffrey Dahmer style. I'm Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. I'm Peppa Pig. Like, decapitated pig obviously died in horrible suffering. What is this? Have they been hit in the head with an axe? They've got some, some type of split across the forehead. This is British farming here. This is what I'm talking about decapitated pig's head in what other world would you say this is good welfare playing around with animal body parts like jeffrey dharma making fun of uh animal corpses you know a funny pepper pig um let's look at the comment section we got jesse craig bro it's funny but how could you touch it thank god i'm muslim halal animals are still decapitated so you're sick. There's a couple people saying you're sick, but you know what? I'm actually glad this guy has hashtag back British farming for this. So it gives people a little bit of a, a glimpse at what we're talking about here. But until people actually respect pigs, they're not going to see this as a, a crime, are they? They're not going to see this as a very bad thing. Because if you don't respect the individual that's been decapitated and having their their remains desecrated and made fun of, then you're not really going to see this as a bad thing. It's people's indoctrination that doesn't get them to see through how bad this is okay let's keep going this one here's eye-opening farming's not sadistic disgusting horrifying at all farming is just green grass and happy cows look at this really sadly this cow here has lost her calf sounds sad this cow has lost her calf did you take the calf and shoot them in the head i mean I wouldn't put it past you. I mean, it is common farming practice. Let's have a look. And actually, she's a really good mum and she has got loads and loads of milk. I thought dairy cows didn't care about their kids. What are you talking about? She's a good mum. What do you mean? And if she was such a good mum, why would you take her calves away from her, which is common practice in the dairy industry? And she's desperate for a calf to rear. She's desperate for a calf to rear. I thought these animals didn't have emotions and they didn't care about their calves and you take the calves away because the mothers will kill the calves. I thought that was the whole story, but... When it suits you, they're emotional beings and, you know, they're, they're actually good mothers and they're maternal beings. But when it suit, when we say they're maternal beings, you say, no, they're not. They don't care about their calves. They kill their calves. They're just mindless machines, milk machines. So we are going to use a really old fashioned method called skinning, where we take the skin from the dead calf that doesn't need it anymore and put it on a new fostered calf and then give her back her baby. So they're going to use an old fashioned method. Sounds like something from the Stone Ages, from the Dark Ages, actually. 
you're going to skin her dead calf and then you're going to put that skin on a live calf to trick the mother into thinking that's her calf. Just trying to process that. That is sick. You are sick. You are sick individuals. We are a beef farm, we are not a dairy farm. And as such, our mothers are kept for nothing. So that cow has been kept for nothing um, for a whole year and her calf has died. Therefore, all profit has gone out of that one animal. Oh my God, has anyone got like a really small violin? She's not gonna get no profit out of her meat and milk machine. Wow, like, oh my God. Farmers work so hard skinning babies. What I will do is I will make a hole, a little incision, I will shove the air line in and I will pump up the skin until it comes away from the body. Then I will make my incisions and then the skin will come off easily. That is a trick that a butcher told me. So basically what you're going to do is inflate a corpse and then take the skin off of the corpse to trick a mourning mother uh, into thinking that's her calf. What about the calf with some dead calf, another dead calf's skin on them? You don't think about the other calf, do you? You don't show the skinning because you know that it's gory and disgusting. You know, you wouldn't, wouldn't want to put that on TikTok because most people would be disgusted by it. You can't make this up. You can see leg holes here, hold it in place, neck hole. And then I left a little hole for the tail and his tail is actually through. That is the complete tail. Um, I took it off from the inside. I do not know what's going through that cow's head right now. That is incredibly bizarre. I don't know if that's making the cow think that that's her calf or just disturbing the cow even more. How do they know that that cow thinks that that calf is theirs? Now, you know, people, <laughs> the farmers think cows are so stupid. You know, it's insulting. Everyone like go to the park and ever see squirrels and playing, and you feed them nuts and you just look at the squirrel and go, oh my God, look how adorable those squirrels are. And your, your kids go and play with the squirrels. Well, this guy here has a massive machete and- uh, He's back, master butcher. Master massive butcher. Chopper. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going a bit different. Can I just start by saying I am only here to educate only. If you don't like his videos, just scroll through. Don't have to watch them. We're not bothered either way. We're not bothered either way, you know, I just got my massive machete and I've got these two beautiful, cute little squirrels, kids. And now I'm about to show you how to cut their heads off and eat them, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to watch it, you know, we're not bothered either way. <laughs> Me and my old farming mates will get off on, you know, decapitating squirrels like we do with every other animal, yeah, you know. <laughs> don't have to watch it, we just get off on killing all kinds of animals. No animal is safe around us. When we've got a gun or we've got a, a knife, you know, or we've got a big arm glove, <laughs> none of these animals are safe from either getting nonced up, stabbed up, shot up, you know, enslaved, whatever we want to do with these animals, but just keep scrolling if you don't like it, you know. If you haven't been indoctrinated enough by our propaganda, you know, then this is going to, like, make you feel a little bit icky. But if you have, you're just going to see this as normal. Hashtag back British farming, hashtag love the NFU, hashtag farmers love their animals. Let's go, here we go. Oh, this guy here. Mate, I thought I had massive eyebrows to us all this guy. You can't tell where his eyebrows end and his hair begins. It's just, he's just one big eyebrow, this guy. He, he's got to raise some eyebrows here with uh, his latest TikTok. Let's have a look. Vegans wonder why we don't like him so much. Well, here's an example. <laughs> Farmers wonder why we don't like them so much. Exhibit A, pig's head. Exhibit B, fisting cows. Exhibit C, decapitating animals they claim to love. Oh, my God. Shocking. Shocking that these activists here would actually drill into a tire. That is, that's shocking. Like drilling into a non-sentient, inanimate tire made of rubber. These vegans are pure, moralless, ethicless beings. You know, they're monsters, really. Not like what farmers do with cordless drills, as you'll see here. You know, it's fine for farmers to slit open the scrotum of a captured animal and then use a power drill to drill out their testicles because, 
you know, that's the proper use of a cordless drill. If you're going to use a cordless drill, you might as well use it to torture an animal and not to, you know, drill a hole in some tires because that's way worse, eh, bro? Hey, eyebrows, William. That was a video of a Miller d uh, Depot that supplies dairy products all around the country. You know, oh, God. They supply good homegrown fresh produce. That's all they do. You know, they're just... You know, the dairy industry is just good, nutritious, grass-fed produce. It's not a horror story for animals at all. Like, farmers, we're the victims, you know. That that tyre from that truck is the victims. Those vegans, the monsters. But us cordless drilling off testicles and doing all these other horrific things to animals is just back British farming. Getting their tyres vandalised by a drill, punching them to the sidewall. Well, his, you know, his language is too graphic here. Like, oh, they should have censored this. Like, what, you saying they drilled into a tyre, bro? Like, my God. Like, I'm going to have to... Ugh, I'm going to have to turn this off. This is way too graphic. Listen to yourself, mate. Have you ever been to the slaughterhouse your animals go to and watched them try their best to escape a knockbox? They ended up destroying 200 tyres and costing over £80,000 worth of damage. Wow. That's a, that's, a, that's a massacre. That is a massacre of tyres, bro. Now we're talking about a tyre genocide, mate. Like, oh my god. That's not mentioned the loss of downtime replacing all the tyres. What? They had to replace the tyres? Well, luckily you can replace tyres, hey. These animals can't replace the life that you rob from them, hey. They can't replace their head back onto their body after you cut it off. But good news, they ended up getting arrested for it. Well, that's great news. Glad these vegan monsters got arrested for drilling some tyres. What should happen to you for sending your cows to be murdered, the ones that you love. What should happen to you? I'm just really annoyed that they're not getting punished by having to pay the expense of it. Wow, is that annoy Is that what annoys you, William? Is that what annoys you? Wow. Do you reckon it annoys a cow when you've got your arm all the way up their rectum? Do you reckon it annoys the bull when you're sticking an electro ejaculator up their anus to force them to ejaculate? Does it annoy the calves when you steal them from their mother? What's annoying, mate? And and. Why aren't you being punished for that? Do you think the activists should be punished for drilling tires? What punishment should the animal killers get? Anyways, that's uh, that's William. This guy's an absolute meme. Look at him thinking that he's done something like clever there. Whoa, mate! Like whoa, whoa, bro! Like you know, just just very poignant, very poignant TikTok there, William. I am a victim of a hate crime. That's not what a hate crime is. What the hell, dude? They're just very bizarre people. Like, look, she's got this... What, what she's got in her nose here... So basically, they do it to stop to stop calves from nursing on other on other cows. But look at her. It's it's like some medieval torture device that, that they stick into the cow's nose. But listen to the audio file they've used. I am a victim of a hate crime. As they're putting a That's cow in a cattle crush... Point of view, you're caught sucking the cow's boobs... They're just weird people, like, they're just weird, like, noncy kind of bizarre people, you know, because they're always playing around with the animal's private parts. They're always controlling these animals. They're always doing bizarre things to these animals. And um, I don't know, they're just, they're just very strange individuals. You know what? I'm speaking out of school here. I think I need to watch a little bit of NFU farming propaganda. I need a little bit more back British farming propaganda to lull me back to sleep. I just want to start by saying a massive thank you to all of you for backing British yeah. farming. Yeah. We have seen over a million people sign our food standards Amazing. petition. Amazing. And it's very clear to me that the people of this country have drawn a line in the sand. Yeah. They have been very clear that they do not expect to see food imports that are produced to lower standards no. that do not meet the same high standards that we produce to here. England has some of the highest standards in the world. England has the highest standards in the world. You have rightly said that you want to make sure that we maintain our high standards of animal welfare. England has high standards. Decapitated pig. Oh, no, no. England has higher standards. Uh, factory farm chickens. No, no. The factory farms don't exist. So I, I feel better now. I feel cleansed now that I've, you know, lulled myself, lulled my worries away with some... And a few propaganda. Let's let's go. Let's see what Davey has to say here. Please, no, no bad news, just only good news. Don't be fooled by the BBC. Oh, because the BBC put one one documentary out that wasn't in the favour of dairy farms, and it was actually it actually exposed dairy farming quite horribly. 
But this is the reality of British farming. This is actually the reality of British farming. Look, look, look at this. Oh, you got the cow chasing you, do you? Getting followed. Oh, wow. Oh, and they love you. The blood, sweat and tears. No matter... Well, there's blood, sweat and tears and still not enough hours in the day. The blood comes from the animals. The sweat is you have to wipe off your brow after fisting animals all day and decapitating them. So don't act like some type of folklore hero, mate, just because you harm vulnerable beings all day. Oh, give him a little scratchies, eh? Yeah, give him a little scratchies. He's got a little ear tag on, doesn't he? Oh, look at this. Got his little slave tag on, does he? Getting ready to go to the slaughterhouse to drown in their own blood. Wow. No matter what the media decides to show, this is what we'll show. We'll show just a little bum scratches and see how much the cows love me before you betray them and decapitate them. <laughs> we love our animals. Look at him. Davey, you love your animals so much. Oh, you know what? I've got a challenge for you, Davey. Why don't you show me how much you love your animals? And uh, you can email me, joeycarbstrong at gmail.com. I would like to know when your cows are going to slaughter, what slaughterhouse they're going to, and I'd like to watch them with you, you know, with your little... With your little music playing, we can drive to the slaughterhouse, ding, 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 ding. And then we can film your cow's face before they die. And I want to I want to see just how much you love them when we see the last bit of life fade from their eyes. You know, from my perspective, right, and from the animal's perspective, farmers are just, they're just glorified animal killers that have been really good at marketing. That's all they are. Um, they hoodwink people. They hoodwink people. And... Uh, at this point, you know, all I see now is just just killers, animal killers, getting away with some of the most ludicrous, ludicrous gaslighting I've ever seen. The last video from, from our hashtag British farming on TikTok. Let's have, a little, let's have a little watch from this one. Right then. Farmer. Like most people on this app, I'm getting bloody pissed off with all these vegetarians trying to tell you how to cook tofu with a side of disappointment. All these vegetarians telling us how to cook tofu, you know, tofu's just so offensive to me, you know, I'd rather eat, you know, suffered animal bodies. Tofu, bloody vegetarians. So I've come down to my local farm shop, Watson's, to get a proper piece of cow for me tea. I went down to my local farm shop, Watson's, you know, Farmer Watson, who loves his cows so much he's got an extra sharp knife for their neck. You know, just to get me a nice piece of cow for my tea. You know, this is how they view animals. This is how farmers view animals. They want to cut off pieces of their buttocks, you know, to have for their tea. That's all farm that's all cows are to farmers. They're either they're either units of production to make money from, or they're little morsels of flesh. To feed their little sadistic carnist urges. They want the blood and the flesh in their mouth. Look at that. Prime bit of fillet steak, that. Oh, and man. like all good steaks, if it can't hold open a door, it's not fit for the fucking table. But uh, this one's perfect. So let it come up to room temperature. Bit of salt, bit of pepper. Bit of salt, bit of pepper. <sighs> I've got so many Jeffrey Dharma analogies to make here, but I'm just going just gonna to leave it now. I think we've... Probably had enough at this point. And sear the edges on, and just because we don't want all the juices to run out when we cook it. The juices, you know, there's so much juices in a steak. Just love me juices steak. What type of juices are they, mate? Like, what is it? What what is it? Plasma from blood? Let's let's see what the juice is. What is the juice in a steak? It's myoglobulin in the cardiac and skeletal tissue of vertebrates. Oh wow, <laughs> yum. Yeah, that's not disgusting at all. Once we've got it cooked, leave it out on side to rest for a minute, because after all two-minute performances, we deserve a rest. Did he just make a sexual innuendo while he was cooking body parts up? I wouldn't put it past him. And then slap it on the plate and cut it open. That's it. Sorted. Look at that. Proper bit of steak, that. I'll put a link in my bio to the butchers. I'll see thee. That's how much farmers love their animals. So that's the hashtag back British farming on TikTok. And I would encourage you, if you're actually truly for the animals, to hijack this hashtag with the truth of British farming. Hashtag back British farming and show some of the investigations. Well, some. There is now so many investigations. Every time, basically, just walk into a, a chicken farm or a pig farm these days and you see something horrible. So walk around a dairy farm. 
just just walk around a dairy farm, have a look around. You're bound to find a dead pin. You're bound to find something horrible. Just just wait if you wanted to. Just wait around with a with a zoom lens, and take a little look see see what the farmers are doing to the cows. If there's some small holding, they're still taking calves away. They're still going to send them to a slaughterhouse, and then I encourage you to follow them to the slaughterhouse. Let's see if the slaughterhouse will let us in to really. Get a good grasp on how much these farmers just love their animals. We need to flush animal harming down the toilet, get rid of it. It's inefficient, it's cruel, sadistic, and you know we need to champion the plant farmers, veganic farmers, people who are going to actually help feed the population and not destroy natural habitats, you know, deforest all the land and decapitate these beautiful sentient beings that don't want to die. So that's the Back British Farming Campaign. The NFU are just uh, propagandists, uh, lobbyists. Uh, they mouthpieces for farmers, really, to help them sell their product. That's all they are. Don't fall for it. Stay sharp. Stay switched on. Live vegan. And if you're a vegan, please help us hijack the Back British Farming hashtag. Let's see if we can create another February debacle where February, the hashtag February is completely taken over now. <laughs> by the truth. Here's a new hashtag to start. Hashtag back British animal sanctuaries. See you all in the next video.